Subject-verb agreement means that subjects and verbs must agree with each other in number. In other words, this means that if the subject of a sentence is singular, the verb that goes with it needs to be singular as well. And if the subject is plural, the verb needs to be plural. Even though this seems pretty straightforward, there are some situations in which using the right form of the verb could cause problems. In the sentence, my brother is taking the bus to school, for example, brother is a singular noun, so the singular verb is needs to be used. However, in the sentence, my brother, as well as most of his friends, is taking the bus to school, it's a lot less clear whether a singular or a plural verb needs to be used. The following guidelines will help you make sure that your subjects agree with your verbs. Situation number one. When the subject is made up of two or more nouns or pronouns connected by and, you need to use a plural verb. So, he and his sister are on vacation. When two or more singular nouns or pronouns are connected by or or nor, you use a singular verb. Like in this example, the chairman or the secretary is at the meeting. Number three, when a compound subject contains both a singular and a plural noun or pronoun, joined by or or nor, the verb should agree with the part of the subject that's nearest to the verb. So, the owner or his employees go to the bank every day. Or, the employees or the owner goes to the bank every day. Number four is about not being misled by phrases that come between the subject and the verb. You just have to make sure that the verb agrees with the subject, not with the noun or pronoun that might be in the phrase. So, one of the men is injured. Or, the girl with all the dogs walks down the road. Number five. You should use singular verbs with the words each, each one, either, neither, everyone, everybody, anybody, anyone, nobody, somebody, someone, and no one. So as an example, each of these books is good. Or nobody ever calls the emergency number. Number six is about what to do with nouns such as mathematics, civics, euros, measles, and news. Although these words look plural, they also need singular verbs. So, the news comes on at 10 o'clock. By the way, words like euros or, for example, dollars are a special case. When you're talking about an amount of money, you need to use a singular verb. But if you are referring to the euros or dollars themselves, so the currency, you need to use a plural verb. So, 10 euros for a ticket sounds quite cheap. And euros are often used instead of pounds. Number seven. Plural verbs are used for nouns like scissors, tweezers, trousers, etc. So, those trousers look very cool on you. Moving on to number eight. When using sentences beginning with there is or there are, make sure the subject follows the verb. So, there is one option and there are many possibilities. Number nine. Collective nouns, so nouns that are considered singular but are usually made up of multiple members like team, committee, class, family, etc. They take a singular verb when they operate together as a group. Like in, the committee votes on the proposal. If the members of the group represented by the collective nouns operate independently, so doing different things probably at different times, you should use a plural verb. Like in, the class write their thesis paper this year. The last one is number 10. When you use expressions like including, accompanied by, in addition to, or as well, etc., the number of the subject does not change. If the subject is singular, so is the verb. So, the king, accompanied by the queen, is visiting the Netherlands.